Welcome back to another Empire Motor Club, everyone. Today I brought the Porsches out because I'm actually going to say goodbye to the 997.2 Turbo S. She's been good to me, we've had a lot of fun, but I guess it's time to say goodbye. And I know all of you must be asking, are you crazy? Didn't you just spend a lot of money? Why are you selling it? I know you guys have all these questions and this vlog is going to answer all of those questions and more. First of all, I know that everyone knows I love Porsche. I love the history. I love Porsche cars. I love the engineering. I love the way they drive. I love all the colors. It's And I love tuning Porsches. The 997.2 Turbo S was my daily driver. I turned it into a hell of a beast. It can practically eat up all these supercars. But then I got the Nissan GTR. <laughs> Things started to change. All I can say is I still love this car a great deal, but obviously I did not post it on social media. I didn't let anyone know I was gonna sell it. A close friend of mine actually came to me. He asked me if I wanted to let this car go. He was really, really in love with the 997.2 Turbo S. He loved all the modifications, and it's really rare to meet someone who appreciates everything you appreciate and love. You know, he straight up told me, he's like, whenever you're willing to let it go, you know, I'm here. It was more about the friendship and also him appreciating everything I've done with this car. Every single mod, from the IPD plenums to the DO88 intercoolers, to the Klein Innovation ceramic coated headers, the HJS cats, the Klein Inconel exhaust, the carbon fiber tips, to these BBS E89s that are so rare to see on a Porsche Turbo S. And all the little modifications I've done on the exterior, like the Moss Hammer rear inlet hole, the GT2 wing, you know, the Moss Hammer side skirts, and the GT2 front fender flares, even the carbon fiber front lip, and all the interior bits and pieces, like the GMG roll cage. I have a new steering wheel in there. Um, carbon fiber bits and pieces of everything. It's a little over, over redundant with carbon fiber, but my friend loves it. Knowing that my friend will take care of this car, it gives me a peace of mind. Hey, it's, it's always better to give it to a friend. That way I can see it whenever I want. And if I need it for a vlog, let's say for the 488, I can, you know, just ask him for a favor, drive the car. There's a lot of things about this car that I absolutely love and I feel like I will regret selling. It's a daily car. It's like a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's got like close to 670 horsepower at the crank. It's got gobbles of torque. I mean, it just, it flies. It's scary to drive sometimes, especially on the Cobb tuning stage three. I think the fact that it has Cobb tuning on it, it makes it easier for my friend as well. Like he was telling me how much he loves Cobb tuning. So, you know, all the modifications will go to the next owner. I'm just really happy that he's gonna appreciate everything and that he's gonna love everything that I've done with the car. I guess for me, it took me a while to come around because I put a lot of money, I put a lot of time, I put a lot of effort into making this car the way I wanted it to be. This project I've learned so much on and we filmed so much. We did a lot of vlogs. I know that there's only been two vlogs about this car, but actually we've spent so much time filming this car. I feel like everyone throughout the whole entire process has learned so much about car tuning. That is priceless. So this car will always be in the back of my mind. It has a special place in my heart. You know, it's a continuation of the 993. The 993 was my first major Porsche project. I've had about five Porsches in the last five years. Starting in 2014, I had a 997 Turbo, and then I had a Cayenne GTS. 
And then I had a 991 GT3, and then I had the 993, and then the 997.2 Turbo S. So for me, it wasn't that I don't love Porsche anymore, and it is really hard to let go. Trust me, like I know a lot of you guys will know because you guys are car guys. Car guys definitely know what I'm talking about. It's so difficult to let go, but I told myself it's, it's 2020. It's a new year, it's a new decade. I've been playing with cars for about 20 years now, almost two decades. I've lived out my dreams. I think I'm fortunate enough to focus on my career. I work really, really hard. Everything that I own, I've worked for. Trust me, dreams do come true. You just gotta put in a lot of work, blood, sweat, tears, a lot of sacrifice, and you have to have a great support system from your loved ones and your family and your friends. But for all of you out there who want to keep pursuing your dreams, I fully support you. You just gotta keep working, keep grinding. You know, sooner or later you will get there. Just don't take any bullshit. You know, just be true to yourself, focus, and do what you believe in. Last year was, was such a profound moment when Dizzy and I had Katia. It's a new life. I'm a father now. My focus is obviously entirely on my daughter, but I told myself, because we have a new family member now, it's time to try new things. And I'm learning on the go. I'm learning every single day and I'm experiencing life with my daughter, with my wife, with my family. Everything around me is starting to change, including my career. I was like, I don't want to get stuck in the same roles as an actor. So that's why I need to keep experiencing life. I need to create new moments. I need to create new experiences. And I want to just go out and try different things. It started with uh, collecting watches. I've been talking about watches in the previous vlogs. And today, I just wanted to show you guys something that I wanted to try. I'm really into vintage stuff, especially Rolex, NPP, NAP, but over the years, I started to sell a lot of my AP. But at the end of last year, I told myself, hey, I gotta try newer things because I started to get reacquainted with AP. Audemars has revolutionized the sports watch, the luxury sports watch. It was overlooked for me. I didn't really understand the history of Audemars. I knew the history of Rolex, the tech, but then I realized that Gerald Genta started the luxury sports watch with the Royal Oak. So at the end of last year, I kind of went around full circle back to AP, but I used to be into offshores. I used to be into the Royal Oak offshore, and I realized that it was too big, too clunky, too chunky. Maybe the older I got, I liked more fine watches and, and smaller dials, something more gentleman-like, something sporty, but more elegant. I got back into older Audemars. The older AP meaning what I have on my wrist today, which is the 5402BA. It's not the stainless. And this one Dizzy got for me as well for my last birthday. This one is the original Gerald Genta design Royal Oak. Uh, this one is obviously yellow gold with a navy blue dial, factory set diamonds, in here, as you can see, we'll give you guys a close up in a bit, but this is such a beautiful piece. And I started to appreciate something new for me. And I think this whole thinking was what sparked why I was willing to let go of the 997.2 Turbo S. For me, it's a new start. So hopefully you guys will appreciate what I've been talking about. Hopefully you guys didn't get bored to death. It's uh, Time to say goodbye, but maybe it's time to say hello to something new. I hope you guys have enjoyed this vlog, enjoyed listening to me ramble on about my thinking, about why I should let this car go, my reasonings behind everything, and uh, just about life, trying new things. I guess this vlog is a, a very personal vlog. I enjoy telling you guys about how I deeply feel. Maybe this way you'll get to know me more. So stay tuned, keep watching the vlog, I'll update you guys soon, but for this new year, I suggest all of you guys try some new things. All right, peace, and I'll see you guys later.